back with us on the Sports Mag Zone. We are two days away from the official opening ceremony for the Tokyo Olympics and amid heightened expectation about duels between and among the very best athletes in the world is a discussion about the tools afforded to some competitors in Tokyo. So, what are they talking about? Well, the discussion concerns footwear, specifically the Nike Air Zoom Victory Shoes, referred to simply by many as the Super Spikes. Since these shoes were cleared for use by the authorities, world records have tumbled while some of the fastest times in the history of certain events have also been recorded. The world record in the women's 5,000 meters, gone. The world record in the women's 10,000 meters, gone. The world record in the men's 5,000 meters, gone. Great Britain's national 800 meters indoor record, gone. While Jamaica's Shelley and Fraser Price wore the shoes when she dropped 10.63 seconds, the second fastest time in history by a woman for the 100 meters. Now, some are excited by the possibilities now that the top athletes have this technology at their disposal. But as with everything, not everyone is happy. And among those who have an issue with the super spikes is Usain Bolt. This is what the great man said. It's weird and unfair for a lot of athletes because I know that in the past, they, the shoe companies, actually tried and the governing body said, no, you can't change the spikes. So to know that they are actually doing this is laughable. Now, in an email sent to Reuters newspaper about the super spikes issue, Nike said, quote, we're just smarter about how we engineer and assemble them. Well, joining us to talk about this issue is our track and field expert, Leighton Levy. Leighton, welcome to the Sports Mag Zone, sir. Hey, George. Good, good, good. All right, your position on this new technology that is seemingly giving a tremendous boost to distance athletes who quite, don't quite know the boost for the sprinters just yet. But based on what the distance runners are doing, it's a massive help, these super spikes. It, it is. I mean, but in, 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 if you contextualize um, equipment, um, Jesse Owens run on cinder huh? with, with some really heavy spikes. Have you, have you felt those spikes? I mean, I had an opportunity to, to experience what it feels like. Those are heavy, heavy spikes with long nails. And over, year, over the years, we've seen the technology advance to the point where spikes have become a lot lighter. Um, you know, running tracks have become a lot faster. I mean, you know, when you look at the fact that the surfaces that athletes run on these days, if they were running on them 25, 30 years ago, they wouldn't be running the times that they've run. So this is just another step in the evolution of the equipment that makes athletes perform better. So the thing is, I mean, yeah, from Nike in introduced the Vaporfly back in 2016, we've seen the constant evolution of, of footwear, which has helped performances, especially for the longer distances. And of course, you mentioned that the, the, the numbers are not quite in for the sprints just yet, but there's an, a rough estimate that it takes perhaps 0.05 seconds off of an, an optimal performance for an athlete who's usually at the top of the game. Um, for, the, for, the, for the longer distances, the, 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 the results are quite stark. You mentioned, of course, the 10,000 meter world record that was set, that was set in 2016 by um, I think Almaz Almaya. So the the Hassan broke that record in June. She took 10 seconds of the of the time, only for the record to be broken by Gide two year, two days later, who took five seconds off the <laughs> previous record. So you see where the advantage has come, but it's just the evolution of the sport. And, and, and you know, and when you consider you saying both saying it's unfair, I don't see where it is because it's not like Nike alone has that technology now. A lot of other companies have adopted that technology but, but and, the and it's beginning point, to benefit. But on the bold point, my friend, let, let's examine that because that, I think, is where the issue is because of what he said. He said, unfair. When mm. you look and consider that what Bolt did, 958, 19.19, those are epoch shaping yeah. performances. Those are performances which, have, which, which vaulted an outstanding sprinter into a company of one as the mm -hmm. greatest we have ever seen. And Absolutely. here's where he's coming from. He's saying that, look, it is that another outstanding athlete aided by this evolution in the technology could usurp what I have done. And I'm sure you would think of others, but he's thinking of himself and he has every right to. He, they will usurp what I have done and stand in a new company of one displacing what I did 
when it is that really and truly the transcendental talent, the man with the epoch shifting talent was really me. I did that and it is because of the spikes why you will get anywhere near or even break what I do and that is unfair because you will now go down in history as the fastest man of all time and all the accolades will fall to you when those who watch and know the sport know that I was that guy. Yeah, but people can always argue that had it not been for the running surfaces and the lighter spikes that Puma uses and the running equipment that they train with, the better nutrition, both probably wouldn't have broken away record either. So you see, George, it's, it's, it's the evolution of the, the equipment and the technology that around the sport. You can't stop it. It's, 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 it's natural by evolution, by the process of innovation, that people are going to try to find ways to run faster, jump longer and jump higher. So I don't think it's unfair. It's just that Nike has gotten a leg up on the field. And I think they're catching up. And I think over the next few years, we'll probably see Puma or another company, A6, might come up with something that is even better than the, the super spikes that spike Nike, that Nike have now. It's all a part of innovation. I don't think it's necessarily unfair. Because, um, as I said before, when when Don Quarry was running in Montreal in, in, in 1976, and if you remember, he equaled the world record that year, which was like 10.06. Are you telling me that the, the evolution of the, the running equipment and track surfaces and everything has not helped you say Bolt run but, much faster but, but, than Don Quarry ran? But, but the spikes that you ran in when you ran a, when you were a, a track house guy at, 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 at Cast, the, the, the old day for UTEC, I'm sure those spikes are different from what these boys and girls in high school Abs are running now. Absolutely. Those things were heavy. And the, 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 it, there was no pushback. There was no transfer of energy on the spikes. Because one of the things that makes these spikes so special is that there's a resilient foam that they use along with a very hard carbon plate. So when you, as you know, George, in, in terms of um, physics, when you apply a force, some force, some of the force dissipates and of course the rest of it is then transferred back to the, uh, the, the applicator the of object, the force. The object, the yeah. object. Yeah, so what happens with these new spikes is that previously, the, 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 the energy that came back to the spikes was like between 65 and 70 percent. With these new spikes, it's closer to 85 percent. So it, it's, it's all a part of the evolution and the innovation that goes with sport. And, you know, I think Bolt might be upset, but he's going to be still the first man to run 9.6. He's still going to be the first man to run 9.5. You can't take those records from World records are always going to be broken. But the, the legacy that you leave behind as an athlete is what is going to last a lifetime. So I don't know what the problem is. Definitely. And Leighton, you know, I get the sense that the athletes that actually run in these Nike super spikes, they avoid questions such as, you know, do you think you got an advantage? And, you know, most times um, we say some ridiculous things for ads. So like, you know, we advertise for a shampoo and you'd be like, well, it makes your hair grow longer or something like mm. that. Right. But the people that are running in these Nike shoes, whenever they, they are asked, they refrain from questions of promoting, you know, promoting running in this shoe will make you run faster. Is yeah, because, yeah, but here's the thing, Maria. When you put in hours of training and you're pushing your body to the limit and you're throwing up on a daily basis and you feel terrible and you have to eat a special diet and you can't eat your favorite foods, those sacrifices also go into the equation. And then you're going to tell somebody that the spikes <laughs> is what makes you run fast. No, it's not. the spikes helps, but if you don't put in the work, shall it, shall it, shall it, shall it, shall it, shall it best? When just before she ran in Stockholm. Yeah. You're not going to put those spikes on a slowpoke and they're going to suddenly break world records. The, the, the work that goes into what makes the athlete great right. is what the spike will help. So it, it's, it's, you know, the, shit, the athletes are not going to come out and say, yeah, the spikes make me run faster because they put in the work. And if they didn't put on the work, they, they, could have, they could wear three or four of those spikes and thicker surfaces and, and different types of, of foam. They won't necessarily run faster. So the athletes are not necessarily going to to yield to the idea that the spikes is what makes them run faster. The work that they put in is what helps them to run faster. The, night, the spikes just aid in that process. Definitely. And of course, the World Athletics President, Sebastian Coe, when he was asked about the spikes as well, you know, he downplayed the issue of it giving any of the athletes advantage. My question to you is, if this narrative continues, the fact that Usain Bull came out and spoke about it, and, you know, it continues, the dis discussion continues, do you see the top-tier competitions, you know, pulling these Nike super spikes from um, being a part of the competition, like the athletes can't wear it if they are to take part? Well, I think that most likely, if they're going to do that, if you remember a few, a few years ago, um, the swimmers had come up, the swim company, I think, I don't remember it was Speed or who it was, that came up with, 
a swimming outfit that allowed you to cut through the, far, the, the water with less friction. And eventually they banned that, those, those, that gear. I don't know whether or not that's going to happen with these spikes because what we're seeing is that the records at the longer distances are what are of the concern. It, I think it all depends. It comes down to how much, you know, what the pushback is on these events. And, um, and then, you know, if, it's, if it becomes too overwhelming, maybe they'll pull the spikes. But for right now, I think it's more exciting because more world records means greater interest in the sport. We saw Shakara Richardson, who is also a Nike athlete, generate so much interest in the U.S. recently, even though she's not at the Olympic Games, because she's running fast, partially because of those spikes. So the, the, the innovation in the technology is actually perhaps bringing greater eyes, more eyes to the sport. Are they going to then take away that advantage and, and then go back to regular programming when there's so much benefit to be had from athletes running fast times and doing spectacular things when they're wearing those spikes? I, I'm not quite sure mm. on what side of that equation um, the decisions will land. Yeah, yeah. Leighton, a lot of what you're saying is logical, but if I must take up on what George was mentioning and to build on Usain Bolt's point, mm -hmm. there would come a point, you would have to admit, that there has to be some level of um, stipulation and guidelines. In, in F1, um, Ferrari and Mercedes and uh, McLaren, they can't just build the, any engine they want to, to make their drivers win, win F1 races. There are limits and... Um, you know how the things are calibrated to ensure that there's some level of of equity with the presentation of these machines so if you take that into this story then there there has to be some point that the the authorities would look at how far do you take it yeah and i agree I remember they had the same conversation about the big bats that we're using in cricket you know it's it's how far where do you set the benchmark and, and that comes down to world athletics and whether or not they will decide whether this these spikes give an unfair advantage to other athletes, or do they allow the continued use of these spikes, which will then great, generate greater excitement for, for the sport? Because I know track and field, for example, is, has fallen down the pecking order in terms of popularity of sport. Um, the doping scandals and everything has hurt the sport. Mm -hmm. To get more eyes on the sport and attract more sponsors, maybe fast times and world records are what they need. Mm -hmm. So I think it all, it all comes down to um, you know, how they weigh the, the 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 consequences of what we're seeing now and if they're if they're if they're weighing towards a more positive outlook for the sport maybe they'll allow things to to, to continue the way they are with setting reasonable boundaries for you know for performance as it relates to the equipment that you use so i mean it's right now i think right now i don't think we're seeing anything really extraordinary mm -hmm. um but i think if it gets a little bit more crazy in terms of some of the times maybe they start to think about it and start to start to put start to put ceilings on, on how what you can do in terms of the equipment that you create yeah. um other than that right now i, I think it's going to be fine as the way it is and fast times are going to excite people mm. and i think that's what the sport needs yeah well uh, Leighton, you're going to be one of the premier analysts for track and field and the upcoming uh, olympics coverage on on sports max i i suspect that you have all the information of all the athletes who are in the super super nike spikes well, yeah, pretty much all the that she wants. <laughs> but, but I think the thing is that um, I know that other, some of the other brands have already started to use similar technology. Yeah. So I think it'll, it, it's leveling out. And I think in the next few years, I think we'll see a lot more parity than what we're seeing now. Mm. All right, brother, we'll be in touch. Yeah, definitely. See you in the links. I have one of these graveyard shifts that I don't know how I'm going to stay awake, but we'll see how that works for the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. George, and Maya, George and Mariah, George, we have always spoken about how non-athletic Mariah is. Maybe we need to get her some super Nike spikes. I don't know where you got that. Um, it's a discussion that from, we've had, yeah. But yeah, I will take these super Nike, these super spikes. So, from so, Nike, so, 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 Whitaker, thank you. You're, you're saying that in a race for Mariah to be competitive, you need to give her one of those spikes. I would suspect so. That's Jara. not I'm, a fact. I'm, 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 I would I'm, suspect. It's so a rare you. occasion I'm disagreeing with you, my Listen friend. Listen to me. I think in a race <laughs> that, that Mariah needs a taxi. <laughs> Listen, you all really damage my reputation on this show, you know, day after day. I will have my lawyers speak to you. We go to break. Mariah runs as fast as refrigerated molasses moves. They have never seen me run. Oh? Believe that. That's not true. Am I running around the office? We go to break. <laughs>